Welcome. Hello, everyone. Welcome, everybody. Hello. Hello. Happy Friday. <laughs> Officially the weekend. Hi, Barbara. <laughs> Um, if you are willing to, we love seeing your faces. Well, there is definitely an echo, pardon us with that. Um, we love seeing your faces. So if you're willing to turn your cameras on, that's at the bottom of your screen on your computer. And you can also open your chat box there as well. And we love knowing where everybody's coming in from. So if you could uh, let us know in the chat where you're here from, that would be fantastic. Um, and if it's your first art party, we love knowing that as well. We have, we see some friendly faces and lots of new faces and names. So welcome everybody. We're going to give it just another minute or so before we actually get fully started. Let the stragglers come in. Hi, Emily. I knew I knew your name. I just needed to see your face. And Rona. Hi. Lovely. Hello. Hi, June. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I'm Liz, Paula. Hi, June. Hello, Gail. Um, oh, we're coming in from California and Vermont, Los yeah. Annapolis. So wonderful. Yeah. New Jersey. We've actually had people from all over the world at our parties over the last nine months. It's really pretty incredible to be able to be here all together, yet so far apart. <laughs> so mm -hmm. thanks for joining us. Um, shall we get started? Uh, so thank you all so much for coming to party with us today and supporting the Annapolis Symphony Orchestra. Um, just one more reminder that we do love seeing your faces. So if you are willing to turn your cameras on, uh, that's at the bottom of your screen and you can also open your chat box there. And um, when your chat box is open during the party, you can also let us know what you're loving. If you have questions, anything that pops into your head about what you're seeing, we love to hear that. And um, we'll do our best to answer the questions during the party. We do have one technical thing we like to let everybody know about, which is that if for some reason something happens and we have to somehow stop the party, <laughs> uh, if you go to artpartycentral.org, there'll be an updated link in red at the top of the screen. Very, 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 very rarely happens, but heaven forbid you know what to do. Um, and we like to start our parties with a cheers to being all together yes. and to celebrating the symphony. Cheers. Cheers. A night out Cheers. with friends and fascinators. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, everyone. And Zoom protocol tells us that at this point, we're going to mute all of you. Don't be offended. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, for those that don't know me, I'm Laura Candell, and I've been working in the contemporary craft show world for over 17 years. And I've been fortunate to be working alongside with Art Party Central for the last around nine months, and really watching this platform grow and thrive with all of your help. Um, I'm so thrilled to be your host today for this special art party. Uh, over the last year or so, live performance arts organization really, really took one of the hardest hits during the pandemic. And we're so glad to be able to do something to help support where we can. As, as a fellow arts organization, we really feel like we need to stick together here. Um, I did want to give a special shout out to Paula Abernathy and Megan Patrice Riley for dreaming this event up and making it a reality. So thank you, lovelies. And this is also where all of you come in. <laughs> so 20% of all purchases made from today's presenting artists between today and May 6th using the code ASO for ASO at checkout will be donated to the Annapolis Symphony Orchestra. Uh, so shopping for a cause and uh, you know, wink, wink, no pressure, it's fine. <laughs> We're all just here to have fun. So I'm just gonna put that in the chat, that code for you. Um, I am also so lucky to have with me one of Art Party Central's co-founders, Nora Swan of Swan Stone Millinery. And she's helping me co-host today to make sure everything runs smoothly. So say hi to her. And if you have any questions, she's listed as admin in the chat. So feel free to look for her and ask questions. And we're joined today by seven super talented artists. We have Barbara Poole from B Felt, Suzanne Schwartz from Suzanne Schwartz Jewelry, 
Maureen Riley from Poshfelt, Kathleen Tesnakis from Ecologic, Sam Stone from Swan and Stone Millinery, Carla Goodian from Carla Goodian Art and Design, and Megan Patrice Riley from Megan Patrice Riley Jewelry. And the last four artists I mentioned are also co-founders of Art Party Central. So you've got all the co-founders here with you tonight. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about how these parties go. So each of the artists will give a presentation. Our co-host will put the links to the artist websites in the chat. So you can easily click and see their entire available collections on their websites. If time allows, I'll ask them one or two questions, either from the chat or previously submitted. And at the end of the party, we'll open up things for chatting and invite you to unmute yourselves and mingle and ask any lingering questions. So um, before we bring up our first artist of the evening, I would like to introduce the Annapolis Symphony Orchestra's Executive Director, Edgar Herrera, to say a few words. Edgar. Thank you, Laura. Good evening, everyone. This is going to be fun, you know. Um, and thank you for all the artists. And uh, um, I will, I will um, share this with my wife because she's also an artist and she likes to purchase things from everybody. So she's gonna, she's, she's putting the, the kids to sleep now, but then she will join back. But um, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you for the friends of, of the Annapolis Symphony Orchestra. They do magnificent work all year long. And, you know, they do all the work that they do um, and the support really goes to educational programs at the uh, symphony, for the symphony. And I want to tell you just a little bit about that. We have an amazing academy, uh, the Annapolis Symphony Academy, where we uh, have, right now we have about 42 students there, but we're gonna get to about 200 students in the next five years. We're talking about children who are from four years old until probably our late teens. And we teach, teach them you know, violins and strings and all of those things. And they have a, a, a great time there. Uh, we're creating a youth orchestra this uh, coming fall. So that's a, the new addition. So all of the, you know, when you're making a purchase and thinking about that 20%, all of those are gonna go for, for those kids. And the best thing about that is that we have an internal policy that half of all the students at our academy, they receive a scholarship. And last year, um, our, I was looking at the numbers this morning, we provided about $62,000 in a scholarship. These are real scholarships because we actually pay the teachers. So this is real money that we provide. So your purchases are gonna go directly to help kids who actually need it. So. That's what I have to say. Welcome, everybody. And I think this is going to be fun. So thank you so much, Edgar. We're so thrilled to have you with us tonight. <laughs> um, so with all of that loveliness being said, let's see some art. Our first artist today is Suzanne Schwartz. Oh, I'm sorry, is Barbara Poole. <laughs> Barbara, take it away. Hi, I'm Barbara Poole. Uh, my company's name is B Felt. I've been in business since 2007. My background is I'm a painter. I have a master's degree in painting from Mass Art and Design here in Massachusetts. That's where I live. In fact, is right now we where you're seeing me is in my studio, which is Lowell, Massachusetts, which was the birthplace for the textile revolution. And I want to first say thank you to Art Party Central for bringing me on board. And, and I, I hope uh, I hope this is very successful for the Annapolis Symphony Orchestra also, because I, that's one of people always ask, what's your inspiration? One of my inspirations is music. So I listen to music continually while I'm working and I have a very eclectic taste. So I go from, from opera to jazz to pop. So I listen to it all. Um, and I, the symphony orchestra has a special place because I used to attend the uh, Boston Symphony Orchestra here in Boston. So that's it. Let's talk about a little bit about my work. If you'll notice behind me is a wonderful colorful wall. I like to say that I make the stuff that goes with black. I have a, a lot of different styles in scarves. Uh, that's one of my specialities. It's a quick way to change up an outfit. It's very, very quick. So the top of the rack up there, you'll see there's all of really bright, colorful things. They're all made with merino wool. Those are my holies, that's H-O-L-E-Y, I'm not being irrelevant, irrelevant, <laughs> irreverent rather. And I'm gonna demonstrate to you my holies. So that, here's one in black and white. I'm actually wearing one of my holy dresses too, as you can see now. Now the holes, 
are very decorative and fun. It's, it's a really fun little piece. And they go from, this one goes from black to white. They all go from one color to another color. I only do one that's a solid color and that's black, but then all the holes are multicolored. And I'm gonna put it on trying to demonstrate this to you if I can get this on. For some reason, I'm being very awkward today. Ah, here we go. There we go. So I make them generous in size. I'll step back so you can see that you've got a lot of fabric. So it really, they drape beautifully. This merino wool that this is coming from out of India, uh, it's being fair traded woven in um, Rajasthan. Now the holes aren't just decorative, they're actually functional. You can use them to hold your garment on. You know, if you're walking around and the thing is like flying all over the place and you're afraid you're gonna lose it, you just take the garment, pull it through one of the little holes, adjust it and voila, it's now close and it won't fall off. They're also squishy enough so that you can wrap them right around your neck. And then use one of the holes also so it doesn't flip off, you know? Isn't it off when you lose your favorite scarf? I hate that. <laughs> and this solves that problem. You don't, it pulls right through and now your scarf or shawl is on your body and it won't get lost. Another style that I, that I make, and oh, on my website, I have these in a bazillion colors. In fact, if you don't see a color that you need, you just DM me. I hand dye everything myself. Just send me a direct message. Another of uh, my popular scarves. Oh, I also do this in two different ways though. I wanted to show you. I also do it in chiffon. So the chiffon, as you can see, is much more lighter. The, the wool wand, I would say is, you know, all year round and, and, it, and you can wear it. It's good for an outdoor scarf too. This is more of a decorative scarf. It is silk and wool. It will add you a, a touch of warmth. But once again, I make them generous in size. So just wearing it open, it drapes over your shoulders. <laughs> or you can squish it all up, wrap it around your neck. And once again, use those little functional holes to add more interest and to hold it on. So that's the scarf in two different ways, 100% merino wool, or in this case, this is silk chiffon and merino wool. And another style of scarf that's been very, very popular that I love, I love making it. It actually began, I began making these because I, I use a lot of silk in my work. I use either repurposed silk, hand dyed silk, or commercially printed silk. And the scraps, I can't throw anything away. I know a that would probably classify as me as a hoarder in some instances, but I think all artists, we're just hoarders with purpose. So this is called the flutter. And as you can see, when you wear it, over your, it's just, it's like a piece of jewelry. It just drapes down. It's very, very light. I like to recommend these to people who are, are wool sensitive because the wool is sandwiched between the layers of silk. Now these are all one of a kind. I have some on my website and they keep changing and changing. And so what I, I like to do with people, people fall in love with them, I always say, hey, just tell me what colors you're looking for. I'll shoot you some pictures and we'll go from there. Now, if you take this and you wrap it around your neck, it creates this beautiful, beautiful ruffle. I mean, it, it frames your face. You become the centerpiece of your own flower. It's just, it's very, very feminine. And they're called flutters because when you walk, the silk undulates around you. I love that, the centerpiece of your own <laughs> flower. Yes. Speaking of flowers, yes. can you show me the piece at the front here that has the flowers all over it? Oh, the poppy trees. This is another, yeah, another, another style of scarf I make. I call these illusions. I call it an illusion. Well, it will show up a little bit on this dress. The, the dress up here has so much color on it. But you'll notice that when I put it on, the scarf itself disappears. And it appears as if the flowers are floating on your body. And right now I have, I make poppy. And then I have hibiscus and my newest 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 girl is tulip it, i was inspired by my walked out and looked at my two tulips that i had uh, purchased in um my bulbs i'd purchased in amsterdam had just come up and i was like why well, i've never done a tulip scarf because you notice how it, they just float across your body And now from the illusions, I went on from the scarves, I started to make jackets. And this jacket right here is also part of the illusion line because when you, the, the flowers look like they're just floating in air. 
And this thing is as light, bring it up close, you can really see the flowers. This jacket was inspired by uh, my mother-in-law's garden. She was a beautiful gardener. She's still with us, but her garden, she's no longer has the garden, but she's still with us. And they're very, they're extremely light. And on my site, I have, I have this, I'll step back so you can maybe see the back a little better. Can you see it? Yeah. Wait, were those pockets also? Oh, yes, I forgot. Yes, of course there are pockets. What's the point of having a jacket without pockets? You're a genius. <laughs> but they're little pockets. And I wouldn't ever put like a, a pointy pin in there or pen in there or your keys, but you could put your cell phone and your lipstick and your wallet. They're that sturdy enough, but, they, but anything pointy might poke through. So I wouldn't advise that. But if it did happen, I fix, my, I've, I fix garments for people all the time. And in fact, as I just refurbished somebody's vest, because as people know, if you have wool, wool, it, it doesn't matter how, where you pay, how much you pay for or what it is, you rub wool, rub wool, rub wool, eventually you start getting those little pills. And if anything like that happens to you, your garment that you bought from me, send it back to me and I refurbish it and send it back out to you because I want my B-felt creations being beautiful as they're walking around. That's awesome. We do have, um, we do have one quick question in the chat and then we are actually out of time for now. Okay. Um, what type of fabric is the jacket that you just had on? The oh, other type of fabric. oh, good question. This jacket is made from 100% silk organza, but it's not, um, it's what they call soft organza. So it only has a slight body to it. It's not super, like organza can be very, very stiff. Whereas this just has a, enough of a body so that it just doesn't hang. It just it has a little, a little sound to it. Yeah. And merino wool. Fantastic, Barbara. Thank you so much. Thank well, you. I, I do want to see the piece on the other mannequin. We'll get there in the after party. Thank you. Um, and we're going to head over to Suzanne next. Hi, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, and I hope we have a really successful event for the symphony. Um, so I am a jeweler, and the most distinctive part about my jewelry is that uh, most of it is stitched. It is all textile inspired. So the necklace that I'm wearing is all stitched. I stitch in uh, 22 karat gold or fine silver wire, sometimes a little 18 karat gold as well. So this uh, piece, which I wore, is really meant for um, you know, a symphony opening night. Uh, it is argentium silver. All my work is argentium silver, which is a highly tarnished res uh, resistant silver and it has a bright white color. So this is stitched with 22 karat gold, and then there are moonstones uh, set in 22 karat gold as well with chain elements with 22 karat gold. And so I'll drill little holes and I sew through with the 22 karat gold front and back. You can see the back and I believe that the back has to be just as beautiful as the front. Um, so that's one example with the 22 karat gold from the Torn collection. And the inspiration uh, for this was really um, taking kind of something that was torn apart and sewing it uh, together. And then I have earrings on. These are also, these are circles with 22 karat gold that I sew through um, on argentium silver. And these are a great earring, really elegant. The 22 karat gold just pops. Um, or you can also do it with um, really uh, earrings that match, that these are also part of the Torn collection with, fine, with uh, argentium silver stitched with 22 karat gold and moonstone set in 22 karat gold as well. Um, some others, so that's um, some of the gold, so I'll show you some of the silver that I stitch with. Um, and today I actually have, I just finished, one of my favorite necklaces. And this is, it's kind of uh, detailed. So each one of these pieces, I stitch with fine silver. And um, it takes me about 45 minutes to hour and a half to stitch each one of these pieces. It looks like I just kind of throw the stitches wherever I like, but I'm really looking for um, balance and uh, balance and asymmetry 
so if I don't like how the stitches are, I will take it, um, I'll take them out. So this piece, you clasps in the front. This one is a long one. There's one that's uh, one shorter. So this, you can either clasp it right here and wear it, you know, kind of straight, um, or this piece to me is like a scarf. Um, you can wear it with one dropped and when it's one shorter, it's a little bit more, you know, closer to the neck. Uh, but this is one of my personal favorites that I always love to wear. And so this one is oxidized silver stitched with fine silver. Another kind of smaller version of that is uh, the cascade necklace. And this I do, this is the short version and you can see right here, each one of these I stitch with fine silver. I also have this in bright silver stitched with 22 karat gold as well. And this is adjustable. I try to make all my necklaces adjustable so you can kind of lock it in wherever you like. Just a really nice, simple um, look. And I can make it shorter, I can make it a little bit longer. I also have one that is double this length so you can wear it long or you can double it up, which is really nice. One of my best selling earrings is this three piece layered earring right here. So this one has the gold, uh, 22 karat gold bimetal right in the middle. Bimetal is a sheet of gold, 22 karat bonded to a sheet of sterling. It's a thick layer, so it's thicker than a vermeil or a plating. Um, it's not gonna chip off or anything. Um, it's, it's just another way of doing gold where you don't have to have the solid. So this earring comes apart, so you can wear it as three and it has great movement or you can wear it with two pieces. You can also buy it with just two pieces or you can just wear this alone. And I have several earrings that uh, you can wear different ways, some from the circle collection as well. A um, new piece, and then I'm gonna show you some of the pearls that I'm doing. So a new piece that um, in line that I'm doing is from the circle collection. And this piece has these tiny little circles that I have decided to drill. They're so small, I have to drill the holes and then cut the circles. So it's um, a series of silver circles, uh, oxidized silver and some gold. So this one is a long piece, um, which you can wear long or you could double up. Um, and wear it short. And then I also have a 18 inch and a 16 to 18 inch version. If that is not on my website yet, it will be on Sunday. So I apologize for that. So pearls, I love uh, Baroque pearls and 22, uh, sorry, and Tahitian pearls. Uh, it's, it's a pearl that I fell in love with. And um, I do, necklaces, and I'll show you the Tahitian pearl. And although this isn't stitched, it's very, um, it is a really textile, um, uh, as all my jewelry is, textile um, uh, influenced. I really love to create the drape that you get from textiles and fabrics. To me, this has really the drape and that was really the purpose. So this piece has um, seven Tahitian pearls, 22 karat gold bimetal on oxidized silver. And then this is adjustable and back to um, three inches. And I do this in several versions. I have a five pearl necklace with white. I also have um, a three pearl necklace. This one right here is uh, slightly lavender. And I do this in white as well. I also have, speaking of white, this fabulous pair. I do these earrings with a regular size Baroque pearl, but I found this huge pearl and I just had to make a pair of earrings out of it. Um, I love a, a big earring. Um, so this one is just really nice, bold statement 
you can wear a necklace beautifully with it or you don't really need uh, much more with it. Um, what, a perfect, what a perfect final piece to show us. <laughs> <laughs> We rarely get to Suzanne's questions because she has so many collections and they're all so fabulous. We need to see them all. So um, we'll get to some questions during the after party with you, Suzanne. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. And we're going to head over to Maureen. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for having me tonight. I'm thrilled to be part of this fundraising event. And I'm here to showcase some of my work, but I thought I'd tell you a little bit about myself. I studied French couture dressmaking when I was living in New York. Um, I thought I wanted to be a dress designer, but in reality, I needed to pay rent. So I opted to um, start working for the investment banks, uh, doing computer graphics for them. So that was my career when I was in New York City, but I always sewed. I had three sewing machines in my apartment on the Upper West Side, and I knew one day I'd get back to it. So a few years um, ago, I started my company, Posh Felt, and I, um, I evolved um, in the few years that I've been um, producing my handbags, and I've added a few more fabrics to my collections. And the one I'm showcasing right now is the vegan leather because it's got such pop of color, and I wanted to celebrate spring and summer. And I thought I would just give you a little bit um, of uh, a visual of what I do. So let's start with the dress form. This is my newest um, casual crossbody. It's been, um, I've been making it for a couple of months now and I absolutely love it. I wear it myself and I get stopped on the street when I wear it. And what it, what's really nice about it, I'm actually going to show you the one that I wear every day. I chose orange because I love the orange and gray. What I love about it is that it just is very comfortable. And the size is like a perfect size. It's not too big, it's not too small, but it's got the pop of um, silver. And we have grommets, right, or rivets right here that extend to the bottom of the bag. So the bottom is as pretty as the, um, the top. Then we have a great little pocket on the back side or the back of the bag. And it has this silver detail, which is pretty much um, in all my bags. It's a signature um, look that I always include with my pockets. And what makes uh, my bags slightly different than um, uh, what's on the market is I always use unique hardware. So this particular bag has a kiss closure. And what that, how you open it is you just twist the two um, knobs and it opens up and you can get everything you want easily out. And then you know it's closed when you hear a little snap. So you know everything in your bag is secure. And uh, with that being said, I'm going to show you my little bucket bag. This is a really fun bag. I'm actually going to show you the one that I have right here. It's easy to grab. So I have it in yellow right here. And what I love about this bag is ultra lightweight. I mean, ultra, it's five, uh, 5.6 ounces. So you're only really carrying um, the weight of the items you put inside it. But I love my de the detail that there's a, a pocket here, you can use it for your masks or um, your keys, easy to get into. And then the unique closure is, um, it allows you to open up the bag all the way. And then when it's closed, it locks and you know whatever, um, all your items inside are secure. And then once again, it's got a lovely pocket in the back, perfectly sized for your cell phone, even the larger ones today. Um, but what I'm really excited to show you next is my new wooden side bag. And this is the bag. It's also shown behind me. So this is a bag full of texture. It's got wooden sides covered with um, cork fabric. It's made with vegan leather, a nylon strap, which is really soft and durable. Um, it's got a great a magnetic closure here. And then the back also has this great detail of the pocket and a tassel just for a little bling. And then when you open up the bag, it's got a little bit more detail. The edge, um, the edge detail on the front side of the bag. And we also have a tassel on the side. 
But what I love about the bags, and this is what I love, this is the reason why I love making bags. I always think about, well, if you invest in a bag, you know, it has a certain look. But this bag is um, unique because the straps snap off and then you can put a whole new strap on to change the look. So this is a neutral and it goes great with the cork, but I'm gonna show you something fun, hot pink. So if you're going, on, going out and you wanted a sportier look, it changes the whole look of the bag just by snapping on a different snap. And I use marine grade hardware. Um, so these snaps are super durable and they will stay on your bag. You're not going to worry about um, them snapping off. So you need a little bit of force to just make sure they're snapped in. Um, why don't I show you how that, that um, works? So what I always like to do is when you're snapping and unsnapping, you want to hold the wood and then it just snaps off and you can hear that. And I used actually a little bit of force just to get it off because I know I wanted the snaps to be um, secure. So you feel like the contents of your bag are um, safe. So that is the new wooden side bag and I'm really thrilled. It's on my website now and there are 22 different colors. You actually comes with the, um, the tan color, and then you get the option of picking your other color. So you get two bags, actually, two different looks in one bag. So that is my newest bag. And um, did you have any questions for me or? I did have I I keep did. going. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We have, we have a couple minutes left. If you want to show another bag, go for it. Okay, so it wasn't 100% sure. No, so you're you good. You okay. Wasn't sure. Thanks. Thank you so much, Laura. So you see a lot of color, but I also do do um, black bags. So I do want to show you, this is the tassel clutch. And I love this bag because it can be um, dressy, but it can be casual. Um, and it's a great size and it's got... Um, like a built-in handle. So it could be dressy, it could be sporty. And this mechanism is unique where it's a flex frame. So it's sewn in the casing. And when you open up the bag, you just pull the, the frame outward and it stays open. And that's nice because you just wanna grab your cell phone, grab your keys, and then you know it shut when it snaps. And that makes, makes you feel warm and fuzzy because you know your bag's not open and it's not going, none of your contents are gonna fall out of the bag. So I do also have um, neutral colors and um, there's always black. So this is called a carbon though, not a pure black. And I'm wearing black, so it's got just a little bit of um, uh, uh, a contrast to the jet black. Absolutely. You are certainly colorful in all ways. <laughs> well, and we love you. having you. Thank you. <laughs> I love being here and I love color. So yes, good thing. <laughs> thank you so much, Maureen. Thank you, Laura. We are going to jump over to Kathleen next. You are muted, my love. Hi, I'm so happy to be here for the Annapolis Symphony. Um, I have so many memories of outdoor concerts growing up and uh, it's music has always been such an important part of my life. Um, I am a recycling designer, so I want to welcome you to my studio in which I make everything by reusing old cashmere sweaters and they're all one of a kind pieces. Um, I sometimes uh, am lucky enough to be able to work with some really fun prints. This sort of reminds me of the hyacinths uh, in the garden right now. Um, and I'm gonna bring this up a little closer for you. I make clothing like paintings by reclaiming old cashmere and saving them from being landfilled. I love to work in cashmere because it's like um, an heirloom fiber. It has the integrity to um, last a couple of generations. I'm sure some of you have had your grandmother's cashmere sets that you've um, uh, cherished. Well, sometimes when you don't know what to do with those, you send it to me and 
I make all of these. So I make modern clothes, um, hats and accessories, some really fun skirts. The skirt that is uh, matched with this piece, it's a navy blue, I wish you could see it, but it's a little dark, um, is all done by collaging the waistbands of the sweaters. If you remember, sweaters used to come with little waistbands. Uh, so now it's the, the styles change. And so at some point I'm going to run out and I won't be able to make these um, really fun skirts. But for right now, uh, I am absolutely loving these. And especially if you're going to an outdoor concert, having something like this, you can, um, this will stabilize your body temperature. So you can have a little silk top or in a wrap and you will be so comfortable. I also was thinking about what I would wear to the symphony. So I wanted to show you uh, my butterfly sweater. So this is a really fun piece and I have some very special ones uh, available online that have been been beaded and um, have some really interesting textures. You can see the, the speckled texture in the accent piece here of mine. But um, these really go with dresses, high-waisted pants, all kinds of things. And they are so comfortable. So you can just be in a little sheath dress underneath and use this um, as your as your wrap as your cover and the beautiful thing about cashmere is it's super lightweight so you can just roll it up bring it out when you need it i know as as the weather changes i like to have a little bit of cashmere to protect myself from the air conditioning when i go inside um so that brings me to another piece uh, that pink one over here is is calling out to me. She's like, how can you talk about hyacinths and forget about me? <laughs> so this is another sweater that I love to wear in the spring. It is not as dressy as what I would want for the symphony, unless, of course, it was an outdoor evening. Um, these are fantastic, whether it's shorts, whether it's that little um, cover up. Uh, they are so much fun to wear in the spring. And the other piece that I really cannot live without right now is our little neck scarves. Um, I know that you've probably thought a lot about this, but as um, your neck and your wrist, these are your pulse points. And a little bit of cashmere will go a long way in stabilizing your body temperature. So even if you're out in the garden uh, early in the morning or on your morning walk, having a piece like this makes a huge difference. And here's the fun part. You can have so much fun with these, whether you're doing the little knots on top, sometimes whether you just keep it down like this, I even like to wear it just off to the side. You will also find on my website um, cuffs. So if you are a cold person and you're working on the computer at, or you, you go on early morning walks, these are lightweight cashmere cuffs that are perfect for this time of year. So. Um, it's great for people that have rain nodes or even musicians because sometimes you want to get up and play, but you need your fingers and you need a little extra to warm up. Um, so that is one of my favorite spring cashmere items. I also wanted to show you one of my jackets. I wanted to show you some of the one of a kind pieces. When you're feeling uh, a little bit wild, I have a beautiful leopard piece that I've done. I'm gonna bring it up so you can see the detailing. I love making pieces that um, you sort of forget that they're pieced together because the composition is um, so cohesive. And that's my job as a recycling designer to elevate the materials to bring in it into something completely new. Do you have questions for me, Laura? I do have a question. Um, let me see who asked it. Uh, Amy asked, so we can send our old cashmere sweaters and you can custom redesign them into one of your fabulous creations? You sort of referenced that at the beginning. 
I wish that was uh, an easy way to do things. Unfortunately, it takes about seven sweaters to transform into one new item. And oftentimes people uh, may not have seven sweaters of the same type of thing. If you want me to incorporate something of a loved one in, in a particular accent or something like that, I'm happy to do it. It is very, very challenging to go from someone else's items um, to recreate a piece. Totally. <laughs> I love that though. Yeah. Um, so if somebody was starting their ecologic collection, what would you suggest they start with? Oh my goodness. Well, those of us um, that love this work, uh, we all have hats in our collection. So I'm just going to show you um, one of my classic hats. This is the beehive. And when I do the hats, I'm actually felting the fabric. So they're extra soft and luscious and incredibly warm. I have customers that have had my hats since the day I started making them 20 years ago. They get passed down in families. Uh, once you have one of these cashmere hats, um, You'll be hard pressed to find another unless it's an ecologic. <laughs> so we, we do kind of ruin it for people because they're so breathable and pliable. Um, this is one of my new pieces. This can, is amazing on men or women. You can always shape my pieces and everything I do covers the ears, but um, most people start with an ecologic hat or a mitten and then move up to the garments. And so if you were going to an evening or special occasion, which hat would you choose? <sighs> I know. Right now, I mean, right now, I really love the beret. I have to say, I mean, it's uh, just been a lot of fun for me. I did bring sort of my two favorite hats tonight, which is the beret and the beehive. Um, a customer favorite is the onion. And uh, they people write me and tell me stories of the compliments they get. Um, my hats are also very known for times of healing. So if you have a friend that's going through something that needs something soft, warm, breathable, that acts like human hair to make them feel better, um, our hats are very well known for that as well. Wonderful. <laughs> Kathleen, thank you so much. And that black and pink hat, I mean, I have to stop myself, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we're gonna send it over to Sam Stone next. Thanks, Kathleen. Thank you. Hi everyone. It is so exciting to be here for a another very, very special art party. Um, if anyone has, uh, I am Sam Stone. I'm up here in Vermont. My partner Nora is actually um, co-hosting today. We make hats together up here in Vermont. And um, anyone here who has been to an art party before has, I think only heard us talk about wool hats, um, in addition to our garden hats, of course, which I'm going to show in, in a little bit. But um, today, because we love to debut um, new pieces at art parties, um, I'm going to talk about straw. So, um, but of course, I had to swap out my straw hat for a fascinator because I realized we are at a symphony fundraiser. So let's elevate everything. So if anyone wants to see how awesome you can look in a fascinator, scroll through your feed, Look at Laura, look at Carla, look at Paula. Everyone looks awesome. So one of the dangers for me though, is that I do have curly hair and it's raining. So sometimes these things get a little stuck. So I was worried about switching out. So um, we have actually a lot of really wonderful straw this season. Um, this is a Miss Fisher, all of our straw. We scrambled to get it up on the website just for you guys, of course. Sneak peeks are really one of the things that art parties are all about. And similar to our felts, um, I've talked about this before, but we, we start with um, a straw hat body. So this doesn't look a lot like this. <laughs> it doesn't look a lot like this yet, um, but we um, steam them and stretch them over wooden hat blocks. Um, and in most cases, we actually can switch out crowns with brims. So we have a lot of shapes that are actually unique just to us because Nora, who you may be able to see right now, actually has started carving some of our blocks so that when I say unique to us, I'm literally saying unique to us, trust me. So um, I wanted to show you some of our shapes. Um, this one is the Hepburn. 
It's got this lovely swoop to it. Um, this is a little bit more of a rustic straw and we're using um, a recycled sari here. So um, this is silk, but a very, very light silk. And this is a handmade uh, flower made from the silk as well. Um, we have sort of, actually this is a similar swoop to the Hepburn, but with a fedora crown. So it's just ever so slightly more tailored. Um, both of these hats are giving you pretty good coverage in the sun. Um, but we also have very kind of different, we are known, but well, we're known for various things. I'm not gonna say we're known for one thing. Anyway, in this case, what is uh, one of the shapes that's very unique to us is the point on the side. So we love our um, pointed brim fedoras. This is one point on the side. It gives you this great asymmetry as Nora likes to point out, none of us are symmetrical. And so when we have a little asymmetry on our, on our heads, it really brings out a lot of the beauty in our faces. Let me show you actually a little, some of our classics going into different time periods. This one's very dainty, classic, um, a bell cloche, which I know is very redundant. It is a bell bell, but um, this is a very classic 1920s shape here. And it's just so lovely because you can wear it with your jeans. Yes, great Gatsby June. You can wear it with your jeans, but you can also dress it up. I mean, you don't know what I'm wearing underneath. I'm wearing jeans, but I could have a very cute little skirt on right now. And I would look fantastic in my, in my little cloche. Um, another popular one um, because it's so easy to wear is the Babette. So now again, I have this sort of bossy hair, so it's kind of taking over, but this is a great simple hat. And this is in this really beautiful parasitical um, straw, um, silk band. Um, if you can see the detail here in our feathers, sometimes um, Nora dyes the feathers and we cut each of these feathers to make these really cool, unique shapes. So I love that. Um, and then for other spring hats, um, just because I'm probably gonna run out of time. Um, yeah, give, give me uh, give me some of that, what you got coming. Yeah, then, can I give you some of this? Tell me another, another okay. fascinator. So, oh, this one is our Nuno felt cloche. Now I'm showing this one because I think this is the perfect spring hat, but it's also the perfect concert, um, basically the perfect event hat, because you get a lot of bang without a lot of height. <laughs> so whoever is behind you <laughs> and whoever's beside you, you're getting all this gorgeous beauty with the, the we always do a um, hand felted hand cut and then bead it. If you can, you can see that detail, Laura? the beads and everything in the center. Yes. Yeah. Um, and this hat is actually sort of the perfect collaboration between Nora and myself in that this is a silk chiffon on the, well, you can't see it, doesn't matter. It's a silk chiffon on the inside and similar to some of the work that Barbara does, I've felted um, different fibers on the outside. And what the silk allows us to do is felt so light and thin that the hat in the end, it weighs nothing, but you can wear it, um, sorry, doing it the wrong way. You can wear it um, three seasons really, um, because it's gonna give you some of that warmth, but it breathes so beautifully and it's just such an elegant hat. And we do a lot of these custom because since I'm doing all of that felting, I can do all different colors, um, you know, for whichever occasion you're looking for. And in fact, we just did a really beautiful hat for Paula um, where we collaborated on the colors and we can do that through Zoom, we can do that through photos. So that's such a fun project for us to do. Paula's such a great hat model too. <laughs> <laughs> so in the chat, somebody was just asking to see the gray hat with the hex brim behind you. Yes, oh good, because I actually meant to show it. So thank you. It was not Nora that asked about it either. I was going to say, is there a plant in the audience? I, <laughs> I don't forget so. what I'm planning on showing and then I miss a bunch of things. 
So I love this hat because also, so the brim is that hex brim. Was it Nora who asked? Did you say that? Oh, okay. That it was not Nora. Oh, it was not. <laughs> and then look at this sort of 1940s kind of swooping up type of crown that is just so gorgeous. And then with all of our hats, the more you look at them, the more you see, you know, we've got these shaped feathers and this very lovely, subtle silk. It's a stunner and so are you. <laughs> Thank you for showing us all your hats. Um, <laughs> you. Carrie just asked about a different one. We'll show that in the after party though, because we have run out of time, Carrie. Um, and we're gonna send it over to Carla now. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> I knew I had to. But <laughs> I'm the resident uh, difficult child here. Hi, I'm Carla. I am so thrilled to be here with Art Party Central and the Annapolis Symphony. Uh, this night is, I'm so excited to be able to give back to something that involves music. I come from a long line of a family of artists and musicians. And unfortunately, I have no musical talent whatsoever. <laughs> and while there are world famous musicians in my family, the metronome was the object of torture of my youth. So, and when I asked my son to say something lovely about my work for a publicity postcard, he said, she paints much better than she sings. So <laughs> I decided that with my art, I want to do the same thing that music does for us. It reminds us of the best of humanity. It reminds us of everything good about this world and this planet. And so it's really important to me that without crossing over to saccharinely sweet, that I create beautiful work that sings to you in your home. So one of my signature themes is a tree of life. And I see the tree of life as a metaphor for our lives that we're both rooted and that we branch out. And then I always do twists and turns in my trunks to represent life's twists and turns. And pomegranates are a cross-cultural symbol of abundance and good fortune. And I like to include those in my trees as well. I came to art after being a, a little lost after art school and finding myself in an elementary school teaching career, not of art. And when I came back to my art, I was fascinated with printmaking, which I hadn't studied at Parsons, but I, I'm self-taught and all the pieces you see start off with a metal plate. This is magnesium. And this is a design etched into the magnesium. So instead of printing the lines that are raised, I'm printing the incised lines and that's for a smaller tree. And then this plate is for the tree, finished tree you see behind me kind of just to give you an idea. And the plates I use on a hand, old fashioned, like a 200 year old printing press and the paper goes through the press. And when it comes out, I just have the outline, which in this case I sell as a black and white because I think it's so beautiful. And that's from the plate you just saw. But all the pieces you see with color are individually hand colored. So here's the finished painted version of that tree. And as you can see, I do the trees in different sizes, different shapes. I'm working on one now where it's custom and each bird represents a different member of the family. So we're talking about personality and giving the birds personalities. Another theme I really like to explore is the seasons. And this is my small version. I do it up to a setup that has that's five feet long for above a dining room or a couch with each season being quite large. But I still do the same metaphor for life with my trees and I add one with birds, which is winter has no birds, spring has three babies in a nest, summer has the grown up birds, and then the last one flies away in the fall. And another theme I like to work on with my trees, with the pomegranates, is this concept of repairing the world, that everybody has to do their part at this point to make the world a better place. So I love this piece, which is called Repairing the World. I have it with the English repairing the world at the bottom, but also the Hebrew that says tikkun olam. And I made sure it included elements of water, land, and sky, because the whole damn thing needs repairing. And I put the lion with the lamb. 
And then moving into a middle sized tree, you could see the difference behind me, I think, of this tree, what it looks like on the beautiful handmade papers that are made especially for me. And then if I shift a little without falling off my stool, we all know this is life risking here. You could see it on white paper and it takes on a whole different look. Do you have any questions for me, Laura? Would you like me to keep showing other things? I'm honestly sitting here laughing at your explanation <laughs> <laughs> life or death. Uh, why don't you show us a you couple? No, it's more. true. I'm up I, on four stools, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. This is yeah. the only way I could be tall enough. <laughs> we, we've seen her fall, but she, she's okay. Um, yeah, show us another couple and then one. Okay, so another theme I really like to work on is strong women and with Mother's Day coming up, I think that's really great. And I had a customer fall in love. I have these little ones. They're done the same way. They're still all original watercolors. There's about a hundred different ones in the little one series. And I have this, you're never alone, but somebody saw it and said, I'm one of four sisters. And she sent me a picture of their hair color. And so what I did was I custom did it with the four girls for this particular family, all specific hair color and texture. And I'm making four of them, one for each sister and she's surprising them for Mother's Day. And another example of that is somebody saw this Here's to Strong Women piece that's also in my Little Ones collection and sent me this picture. And it's you're seeing something part in progress, but you're seeing it customized for her with the haircuts and the colors of the family and the full quote. Here's to strong women, may we know them, may we be them, may we raise them. Another thing that I do is I personalize. So a piece can have a message written in pencil at the bottom corner, or if it's more formal for somebody making a presentation, it could have a double opening. And it's so much nicer in my mind than a plaque. It's more elegant, it's integrated, it's more organic to the artwork. Somebody just gave you a humble brag in the chat, Miss Paula said, RBG owned some of Carla's work. She did, and I have a letter from her that said, my Brooklyn bird piece was hanging in chambers, bringing her smiles. And I framed the letter and my son put a post-it on the back to his brother that says, Sam, I'm getting this when mom dies. So I know I raised my kids right. And- <laughs> Carla is in no way dying, by the way. This is a long, no, no, long, no. Time, long time forward. Long family humor there. <laughs> Other Mother's Day gift are my flowers. I like calling my botanicals like a little play on, you know, 1800s botanicals, but with the pop of modern color, but all the detail of the old school engravings. And I have irises and peonies and poppies in that series. And then in the little ones, I guess, you know, we have the two girls set up and you're never alone. Mama needs to breathe. She definitely does. And some of us like the ample behinds. And then we have, <laughs> for somebody with a new baby, I really like mama bird, baby bird. I think that's particularly sweet. And then also because so many of our moms are this these days, with their force of nature, or in though she be but little, she is fierce. And I know Paula likes to get my little ones um, in custom framing. So here's an example of the same piece in the same little ones framing you've been seeing. And then anything is available also in this modern, it's called the signature framing. Perfect. You really are one in a million, Carla. Perfect oh, ending. Laura, thank you. <laughs> I love your presentation. Thank you. Um, and we're going to send it over to our last artist of the evening. How that's possible. It's gone so fast, I don't know. But welcome. Um, Hi, thank you, Laura. Thanks, everybody. Um, welcome. My name is NPR, Megan Patrice Riley, and it is a pleasure to be here. I typically come in from my Brooklyn studio, uh, but I am not in Brooklyn. I am in sunny California, finally visiting my family uh, after many, many months of COVID. So this has been a wonderful homecoming, and I get to bring a little bit for you. Uh, this is also so fun to be able to use my art and our art for such to benefit art. So this is, there's just a exponential, uh, exponential uh, benefits happening here. Thank you so much. Okay. So I make contemporary jewelry. What I do is I take traditional metalsmithing techniques and I'm thinking a lot about gold and silver 
but I'm mixing it with this industrial steel cable. So I love, I brought some real, I brought a party, a party hand for you. Cause I, I was thinking about some special pieces and things I would wear for like dressing up to go watch musical performances. There's joy in that. And there's joy to the whole experience, like having the food, wearing beautiful things, enjoying that sensory experience. And that's really what I think about also when I'm designing. This is an industrial steel cable that I wove of um, in a continuous pattern. This is a new piece I just put up actually for you guys tonight, like five, like five minutes before the party started. This is, um, I think this is a really good example of how I design and what I'm thinking about. So this is a continuous piece of cable. So what's happening is this is really, really fine steel cable, like what's holding suspension bridges up, uh, electrical rigging. It's like all over around us in the world, but I adapted it into a micro form and I have it 24 karat yellow gold plated. And then I start weaving with it and drawing with it and creating 3D shapes and space. So I thought this was a really cool piece. This is one piece of cable woven on itself. And what I do is I've used little mini rivets of 14 karat gold fill here to hold everything together. And it creates this really delicate, ethereal um, 3D Mobius pattern. And what I really like also is that even though it looks so delicate and fine, it is incredibly crushable and strong. So it bounces back into shape and it's, it, it's indestructible. It's something you play with and enjoy and it has that sensory experience again. This is like a, a cuff bangle. So you can wear it up high here, but I also left a little thumb hole because I like thinking about wearing things in different ways. So I kind of thought about creating this kind of swoop feeling. The rings, yeah, I just put some rings up too. This is incorporating little freshwater pearls. I like to bring in different gemstones and I, I brought some fun pieces over here. And the gemstones kind of create almost like little notes um, in a composition that juxtapose with the cable. It's all about balance for me. Like this is a heavier band with this light effervescence on top and then little pearls that move around. Everything has a little movement. And what's cool is it has that same bounciness and play and sculptural feel, so fun. And then I just, I brought a sweet piece. This is a little bit Mother's Day as we're getting closer to that. This is an homage to my mom who's more petite and she likes something that's statement but it's also more balanced with delicacy and fineness. So this is a little pearl bracelet um, and it has, everything has a magnet class. We're gonna try on some fun stuff. I love materials and playing with them and like pushing their boundaries. Because things are so light, magnets are really great to hold everything together. The weight and the gravity of the piece won't pull or put pressure on the, on the magnet clasp. So this is a 14 karat gold fill magnet, uh, neodymium rare earth magnet. So it's super, super strong. And it's just, this is something you can actually, you know, put on yourself and dress yourself, which is very novel in this day and age. But I love things that are really comfortable and it has that little bit of flexibility and play. I brought also my classic pieces. I do a lot, as I incorporate more and more gemstones, I do a lot of simple pieces that are about geometry and, simple, and different designs that are just about metal and playing with color there. I start bringing in more and more pearls, like freshwater pearls. And I like balancing the 14 karat gold fill that's happening the little findings here that are holding everything together and then balancing them with those beautiful pearls. So you have color and shape and it all floats together, kind of like bubbles. It's so fun, I love that. And I'm wearing also some fun party earrings. So this is one of my other new designs that I also felt was celebratory. And as we go into like more warm weather and we're thinking about being outside, playing with, shape and scale again this is some newer piece this is our feathered teardrops they are super long so they're not for everybody so i made them in many sizes we have many different ones but something funny also again pushing how we think about how we wear things you can bring the bottom tier up and have it 
go on the top and it becomes a short earring that totally changes shape. I think that's super fun. This also is one of my classic designs and it's a simple chain, but it's actually can be worn double, can be worn long, is really simple to take on and off and it keeps its shape as well. This is not something I love that it can hold up a little, little pouch and it looks like a line drawing and it bounces back. But I brought, I did put a clasp on this again with the little quartz crystals there because I, I wanted people to have the option to wrap it as a bracelet. I love stuff like that. I love having options, honestly, with everything. So I always kind of invite my, my ladies uh, to try things, push, push pieces to their limit, try with different ways of wearing them, wearing like one long, one short, doing asymmetry. So I love that as a bracelet. You kind of, you can see here, I started blending in some sterling silver here. So getting contrast and thinking about color and play and the little dots, so fun. I love that. Um, also, we've been talking a lot about color today. I feel like we're going into summer and we're going into like a more celebratory time. And today was a lot about color. I did bring some new pieces that are rainbow pearls. So maybe more, not so much on the traditional yellow and gold and white pearl uh, family, but taking this and kind of contemporizing it and doing these wonderful, colorful freshwater pearls with sterling silver and steel cable, so more neutral base. This is actually Argentium silver in here. So now it, it's, uh, I just started using this and it, it's more tarnish resistant. So it stays shiny. So you have that contrast that those little pops, like little stars or constellations. I think about that a lot, like looking at star patterns and having the functional pieces, those hardware pieces also become aesthetic elements. This is another favorite earring, it's our vertigo. So in color, and then in the more traditional, things can take on a different feeling and really suit your palette or your mood. And I love that too. You always have so many questions. Options. Yes. Tell I me. Just, I let you go on because you had so much to show. We don't have time for questions yet, but we're going to head into okay. the after party and we'll ask questions then. Awesome. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, and I want to thank all of our artists for sharing their stories and showing us their incredible work and for making the commitment to make a donation based on the sales from this evening to the Annapolis Symphony Orchestra. Um, reminder to use that special code in checkout so that they know that you came from here. I just put it in the chat again. So if you purchase something between today and May 6th and use that special ASO, F-O-R-A-S-O code at checkout, uh, these artists will so generously donate 20% of your purchase. Um, and I also want to thank the ASO and the friends of the ASO and uh, Edgar, Ed, I'm sorry, Edgar Herrera, <laughs> the executive director for joining us today. And um, as well as Paula Abernathy for bringing this idea to us in the first place. And I would be remiss if I didn't also thank Nora Swan from Swan and Stone Millinery for um, helping me co-host today. Everything ran super smoothly, thanks to her being in the background. Um, and I think I can speak for all of the artists here by saying thank you. We so miss seeing everybody in person, but this platform has been such a great way for us to stay connected. And we do have multiple parties a week, each with a different mix of artists, and we do hope to see you at future art parties. With all of that being said, if you'd like to stay on with us for a few extra minutes to ask any questions um, or just hang out and listen, you're welcome to unmute yourselves and ask some questions. And yeah, hopefully Nora will have taken note of some as well for us. <laughs> Did anybody have any questions? Hi, this is Elizabeth. Quick question is, can you send us by email a collection of all of those links in one email? That is Please. the plan. We will send an email right after the party. We'll send an email out with everybody's website and the code. Um, as Megan always says, this is not a test. You don't have to take notes. <laughs> we will get that to you right after the, the party is over. Great question. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> 
Any questions for the artists? All right. I, have a, I have a question. Go this ahead, is Jane. Jane. I have a question from, from Megan. Are you new, those beautiful, colorful pearls? Are they on your website yet? You're muted. I mean, you. Thank you for that. Jane, yes, they are. Oh, and good. if you don't see them, please email me. I'll make sure they're there. It's under the vertigo necklace, the flow necklace. There's a larger double version that we didn't even get to. Kind of like this, but a double size. But those big, but those wonderful colors. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, who needs white? Okay, good, thank you. Yeah, the colorful ones, they're from all over the world. So I've been collecting them for about 10 years. Oh my God, beautiful, thank you. Yeah, you're so welcome. And one of the things that I'm not sure if people touched on, if the artist really touched on, but I believe all of them do Zoom appointments. So if there's anything that you wanna customize or you have questions or anything like that, you can reach out to them and set up an appointment to do a one-on-one -on -one and you know, work with them to create something special. I think I've had Zoom appointments with all of these artists and <laughs> fun. it's a lot of fun and, and you get really good results. So I <laughs> recommend it. <laughs> yes, it is dangerous to your um, wallet. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. For, this was just great. Thank you all. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Paula. I can, I can certainly vouch for that. Um, it's, uh, I just find like hanging out with you guys. I learned so much about your craft. I learn about your, uh, just everything. And like, I, I was, I, I was going to be in my car and I thought, all right, just leave everything in the car, come inside. <laughs> Francesca said the last time, she's like, I'm not used to seeing you not in your car. <laughs> Mary, Mary joins us at a lot of art, Mary Carol joins us at a lot of art parties and sometimes she is in her car. Yeah. Hilarious. It's not um, as much fun. <laughs> I have to yeah. say, we worked with many of the different artists. They are wonderful to do Zoom with. And they will do custom things. Um, Megan did the set, those earrings that she's wearing, I didn't want as long, so she made them shorter for me and they work perfectly. You're my inspiration. I, you have those and then Paula has the long ones. So you guys, we, I make it, I'll make you whatever you want, totally. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know, and I, I had a really fun Zoom session with Barbara Poole of Be Felt and she made me get a tape measure and I had to stand here and measure my whole body. <laughs> But it was fun. It was good. And I got something that fit just perfect. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Sam, I had a question um, from the chat about your garden hats. Do you have garden hats? Um, well, yeah. So I, yeah, I didn't actually show any of them. I mean, now that it's spring. So we have hats um, that started off being called our rain or shine hats because they are made of a waterproof canvas. Oh, so cute. And um, so again, with the fascinator, let's see. See how easy that can be, by the way? People get afraid of fascinators, but we just use a millinery yeah. elastic. And you know, by Zoom or FaceTime, we can show you how to wear yours if you're ever worried about <laughs> it. So we have these um, hats in all different styles. So this is the wide brim cloche. And um, we're doing these different applique. Um, we call them garden hats just because they have cute applique on them, but it doesn't mean you have to only wear them in the garden. So they're great for rain. This is called the soigne, and this is in this bright yellow with, um, with butterflies on it. They're great for the rain. They're great for the sun because they really are a tight weave. And then similar to like our felt, because that's sort of, you know, our first love, they have this body that allows you to, to shape it to your face the way you want it. And it's going to hold its shape. So we love that as hat makers. It's such an important part of what we do, you know, being able to sort of sit in front of a mirror and say, actually, you know, I want to, I want to show my eyebrow a little bit better or whatever. And, and then you have this super functional, which you can't say that about all of our hats but super functional, packable, waterproof, sunproof hat in all kinds of colors. So we, we
we do these custom sometimes we have lots of them on the website under rain or shine hats um, with different kinds of applique. We also have a bunch of veggies. Oh, this one has veggies on it. We have a bunch of different veggies too. So you're adorable. <laughs> <laughs> Did we have questions for other artists? If not, I'm just going to keep asking. <laughs> what, what, what's on the mannequin right, the hat right beside you on the mannequin? Uh, this one right here? To your left, to your left. This yeah. one, yeah? Yes. Oh, okay. yes. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure this is the only mannequin you can see. I have them all around me. <laughs> um, so this, one, this one's actually um, called the Hepburn. It is sort of a more rustic weave. Um, I'm just going to bring it close to you. So you can see that weave. It's, it's lovely. I just love the, mm. these straws because they're so rich. And, um, and it's got, again, this wonderful swoop that just feels so elegant, but also you can wear it, you know, to the farmer's market if you wanted to, but it's, it has the silk and um, it's the recycled sari with the silk flower on it. Fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> Barbara, I wanted to ask you, and you are muted, um, the piece right behind you, we didn't get to in the presentation. Yeah, can you show us that? Oh, well, this is a brand new piece. Um, I don't know if you've heard the, the expression shackets. It's, <laughs> no, okay, so it's actually a trend where people are wearing um, flannel shirts or as jackets, okay? And we've always done that, but now Vogue has decided to call it a shacket. So I thought, I'm gonna make my own shackets because I'm really not into lumberjack. So this is 100% wool. And it can, you can, and it's brand new. So I haven't even got the fasteners on it yet. I, I'm, I'm going to put snaps. You can wear it like a shirt. That's why the shacket, the SH comes from, to wear it like a shirt. But then you can also wear it like a jacket. And it has pockets, of course. And this wool, I, I, I can't say enough wonderful things about this wool. It's coming from, I'm getting it from India Fair Trade. Um, the woman that's weaving it, she's from Australia. And she lives in Australia and India, and she brings the merino wool with her to Australia, um, from Australia to India, because they don't raise sheep there. Um, it's mostly goats. Uh, it's much hotter there than it is even in Australia. And she has trained women to weave. And when I get it, it's, it's, it looks like cheesecloth, if you can imagine, the, the, the weave. It's, it's huge, it's loose, and then I proceed to felt it. This is completely made seamlessly. There are no seams on this. It's all hand dyed, and it's very, very light. It's like, it's, it's, it's I'm, I'm in love with this right now. And I'm thinking I'm gonna put snaps on it. What do you think, rather than buttons? I don't, I like, I don't wanna put buttonholes. I'm afraid it'll it'd break the line. I think snaps would be better. Yes, I'm on board. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for asking, thank you. Yeah, of course. Other questions? I would like to ask before I just keep asking questions. You're so good at asking them. Go for it. <laughs> I may or may not have a slight cheat sheet if I'm being fully honest with you. So <laughs> I've taken notes from the chat. And <laughs> um, I would love to ask Maureen. Um, you are muted, first of all. <laughs> I think my whole like job in life now is to tell people yeah. you're muted. Oh, is, can you every day, all day is my life. Uh -huh. You're <laughs> muted, yeah. So you have so many different colors. What is your favorite color combination? I must admit, I love gray and orange. It's my fave. So this is definitely, um, I, whenever I make a bag, when I'm starting out a new design, I always make one for myself. So it, does, it is gray and orange because I always wear my bags before I start selling them just to make sure that they're functional and I like the design and they work. Absolutely. So that is my favorite. Gray and orange. Maureen, I don't know if you want me to show this, but you made this just for me and I adore it. I do. A little clutch and a little bit of a strap. And I wear it constantly when I go food shopping because if I stand up, maybe you can see it. But it is just the perfect height to go and I can just reach in and get what I need. And it works beautifully, especially now uh, I want to be carrying a lot of stuff. 
Thank you, um, Jim. So Maureen, I have, I have a question for you. Yes. The, uh, the strap that you're using on the crossbody, what is that? What is the strap made of? This is a heavy duty nylon. And the reason why I use it is because it's really soft and durable. Okay. Yeah, because I, I do know one of the things that's important, I, especially for us women, is to have things that are really comfortable yeah. And I, the one that I'm carrying right now is a very narrow leather. Um, and I think for the, for the warmer weather, it would be nice to have something lighter rather than the leather. There so, well, leather, you know has, her. leather definitely has its place, but what I'm loving about, and I try different materials and textures and, and I really, I, I like to challenge myself to find, to feel, to, to have the strap feel as comfortable as the bags do. They have mm. to balance the weight. And I found that the heavy duty nylon is really soft and durable. So it's, it definitely, I'm loving it. And yeah. then I add the silver details as well to um, just jazz it up a little bit. But yeah. so it's functional, it's pretty, it's soft and um, it will last a very long time. All right. No, this okay. is good. I think I'll I'll be doing some shopping with you tonight. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> Carla, a, a question just came in in the chat from Lynn, and she just asked if she could see the four season picture in the back on your right. Four. So we're all gonna see me go down. So. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, let me grab this. She's literally sitting on four stools stacked yep. up. Left okay. And climbing over stuff. Hang on. And I have one other I could show. So this is the small version horizontal. What I had showed you earlier was the small version vertical. And then right here, I have the medium version that. I made for my mom because I offered her anything in my collection, including the really giant one I spoke of, the five feet one. And she said the small one's too small and the big one's too big. So I had to make all new plates. And this is the medium size, but this is great for above a bed or a dining room buffet. Not quite above a couch, but it's still a really significant piece and it I call them my room makers because they're, they kind of become the central hub of a room. And can I show one other little one just because Paula had asked me to show it in the chat. A lot of times people, you know, the first in the collection is designed for a family member like that one for my mom. And another one for my mom was my woman of valor. Hmm woman of strength and coverage and I also just finished this where the woman I did her as bald for a friend of mine who wanted something to commemorate her bout with cancer and to show her strength but this one was designed to be my son if he was a bird and this is normal is overrated <laughs> <laughs> and at the time I created it I was really just going for his personality and no color significance at all. And then he came home from college with blue hair. <laughs> <laughs> and I would be remiss and I can't get off the Zoom because he's sitting here on it waiting for me to mention him. The original Repairing the World was made for my dad for all the work he did down at Ground Zero. Papa. Thank you. Yeah. We love our pop art. <laughs> Thank you, Carla. By the way, that is his name that his grandchildren all call him. He's Arthur, so he decided to go by Pop Art. <laughs> and now we call him that ourselves. <laughs> Before I keep going, anybody else have questions? Okay. Um, <laughs> Suzanne, I wanted to check back in with you if you could unmute yourself. Um, I was curious how long it takes for you to stitch one of those uh, pieces? Um, um, a piece like this one, I just want to get some white. So a piece like this one, and I have to say through the years, I've gotten a lot faster. So uh, the first time I stitched this piece, the first 
few times, I would say this was, I mean, just the front piece, these two, the stitching goes through each other. Um, this is stitched with fine silver. And this piece took about three to three and a half hours. So I now have, and then these all took about 45 minutes to an hour. What's funny is this simple piece took longer than, than this one. <laughs> Um, but now, um, what used to be about eight or 10 hours is now about four hours. So practice makes uh, perfect. And there's about 21, actually 21, 22 feet of fine silver in this piece as well. Unreal. Unreal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think people necessarily realize that when they look at it and it's, it's, fascinating when you think about it if you I always want to think about that with like a scarf or a garment or like how many how many thousands of you know inches are there in there yeah, yeah. and then just the time I mean and also just um with each stitch it's about it not being too loose and not being too tight so that it'll break so even um uh, oh, it's not reflecting well. This is just a simple uh, stitched earring, one circle with one stitch, but it has to be tight enough so that you can't push it down. Yet, if I do it too tight, you know, then I'll then I'll break the stitch and have to start again. You are a master of your craft, my love. <laughs> Comes from my grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think. What was my next question? Oh, it was for Kathleen. Miss Kathleen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was actually curious. So you are a cashmere fanatic. <laughs> what is your what is your favorite thing about cashmere? Oh my goodness. That is a really hard question because there's <laughs> so many things I love about cashmere. Um, I would say that it's ability it has all of these properties while maintaining incredibly light so it gives you a sense a feeling of freedom and i love that about it mm, that's so beautiful <laughs> paula is requesting to see the wisteria jacket oh yes absolutely and um i i did also want to just say that this is the first time I've been able to see June in her green cocoa sweater yes. that I did. And it just looks so beautiful. So, but this is the wisteria jacket. And it's done with a magnet clasp here. This is a size medium. It can be sized down. And uh, the wisteria is also like on the sleeves here. And this can fold up to three quarters. And again, in the back. And it's just such nice blues. It's one of those pieces that can go with so many things. Let's see if you can see the colors oh, yeah. nicely here. And it's just still so amazing that that was actually a sweater yes. that existed. <laughs> and now you've turned into this, like how many, how many different garments are in that one garment? Um, there's about five. Incredible. About five, yeah. And like you said, it looks like it all existed like this to begin with. Yes. And, and that's, you know, that's, that was, that's the challenging thing. Like when people ask me to create from old stuff is to have the, the size that I need for all the different pieces and then right. the colorations that I can make it seamless. Right. And, and that is the biggest challenge. I never want to um, take on a task that I'm not going to give you that cohesive piece that I need. I, I feel right. self-conscious about that. <laughs> I Kathleen, wanna... can, yeah. I, can I ask Kathleen a question? So at another art party, you mentioned, and Paula just made me think of it because Paula said, I bet there is a skirt to match. And my yes. guess is the answer to that is yes. yes. Um, you had said in another art party that your skirt, the banded skirt, its days are numbered because- yes of the, the, that sweaters are not having the same waistband. So that gave me a bit of anxiety because I, I don't have one yet. <laughs> so so is, is this, this is truth? Like we should yes. be looking at your, at your banded skirts at this point because 
we're not wearing sweaters the same way. Is that what's going on? Um, yes, the, the styles of sweaters um, change. So they're not making the sweaters with that, you know, two and a half inch waist band right. anymore. You'll notice that they're plain and it's just a fold over plain knit. So that whole rib concept is going away. Um, and you know, my shelf just keeps whittling down and whittling down, whittling down. So I, I just did a new series of green, uh, a beautiful um, camel and sand color and Ooh. a navy blue series. And, and this this is one of the navy blue series. I wish you could see the navy more. Uh, it's done in the same style of black. It's navy with, oh, there we go. There, now you can see it. It has the... Um, the, uh, I would call that um, cornflower with sort of a, a, a forest green and all the colors that are actually in that sweater. I Perfect. feel like only, only an artist would pull out cornflower as a color. <laughs> very specific. So very specific oh, yeah. and I love it. Yeah, so uh, Charlie just brought me one of this green ones. Ooh. So, um, and there's matching Veronica jackets for this one also. So yeah. But, but yes, one day I will not be able to make any more. <laughs> Such a shame. Yes, but that's kind of the beauty of it because then I'm just pushed to the next concept. That's so true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So my last question is back to Megan um who oh hello oh oh hi um uh -huh. <laughs> and I feel hold on I can't find you where are you there you are there. I found right you here. hi um, <laughs> I got I need to be near Megan all the time um so on the large uh mannequin right behind you is a super fun geometric necklace oh that one's good too I didn't see that one yes oh, this either one. of those pick your fave this is a, well, they're both great. Actually, Paula's wearing a version of this that I created for her and then wove in different gemstones. Ooh. I know this is, this is one of those pieces that is pretty complicated to make. Um, it's each link is woven on itself from a continuous piece of cable. And then I interlock them and created a 3D chain mail pattern. It's a lot of math on this. I love that. But what's great is it looks like it's going to be really delicate, but it really does bounce back and have that 3D fun. Um, um, thank you, Paula. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool. This is one of those statement ones. This is one of, this is the curly hair I always wish I got. <laughs> That's what inspiration. It's really simple, but it, I love, I think this is a great Zoom piece too, because we need shorter a little bit. Yeah. This really does. You can't even yeah. feel it. It's so light. It just, it just. Yeah and, yeah. and this was so fun for me because when I first moved, I moved from California to New York and I had to buy a big coat and I was really worried about this piece. And I, I zipped up the coat and I, I was at a restaurant and this popped out when I, when I like un, uncoated and people from across the room, there was a ripple of surprise across and I was like oh okay oh, this is something really yeah. yeah I'm like I'm doing something I didn't know I was doing huh. it clued me into my work a little bit more interesting that's why we like, do art parties right like magic lady chest hair very lumber sexual we need Barbara's cute lumber lumberjack yes with the surprise jacket, <laughs> jacket. Yes, very With this, honestly that would be great together <laughs> that's great so, oh my god sorry I have a Megan, very strange you just night. knock us over every <laughs> single time <laughs> let this go yes <laughs> so with that I will say do we have any other questions I just want to thank you all for sharing once again it's always great fun to be with you Oh, thank you. Yeah, I will second that like a hundred oh, times. We yes. hope a lot of you new people come back to more art parties. We'd love to have you. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And, and in the next week, go and buy lots of things for the symphony. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Paula, again for, 
for setting this up with us and all your hard work on it. Thank you, Paula. Yes, thank you, Paula. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you to all of you for coming. And we'll get that email out to you right away. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a great weekend.